are you able to predict how the technological future will look in 50, uh, 50 years, like Clark? Uh, uh, I wish I could, um, but if you look back 50 years, it's 1966, six, 66, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, now anyway. And uh, we didn't even start the uh, ARPANET project yet 50 years ago. So I think we tend to extrapolate uh, from what we know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's reasonable to assume by that time that uh, voice interaction and gesture will be very common. Uh -huh. The computers will be able to see and hear us. They will also be able to see what we see and hear what we hear. And so by that time, they'll be part of our conversation. This discourse could easily have a computer as part of it, and we could invite it into the conversation. It could inject itself in saying, oh, wait, that's not true. I just checked, uh, and here's the real answer. Or we could ask it questions. But I think that, that our interaction with computers will move away from the mouse and the keyboard and all that artificiality and move much closer to the way you and I interact. So you imagine when we're having a discussion, I might sketch a, a picture or something to try to explain a concept to you. I think computers of the 50 years from now will be able to understand that conversation, will be able to see the diagram, will be able to uh, form a model in its head, so to speak, uh, about the concept that we might be trying to uh, wrestle with or illustrate. So by that time, I think it's a good chance that we will have um, these, these computers will simply be part of our normal environment in the same way that people are. So connectivity will improve. I mean, uh, between me, uh, my brain and the computer, even with our well, brains? Well, so or? that's a very interesting question. Uh, there are people who have demonstrated that they can put, uh, uh, you know, uh, like an electroencephalogram helmet on and distinguish several different brain states. But this is very crude because it's getting uh, information from the surface of your brain and not down in the core. Mm -hmm. There are some people who believe that uh, we may be able to interface to our neural systems in a way that um, we have direct interconnection with the brain. Now we have some examples of this already, cochlear implants for uh, people who are deaf. You put electronics in the head, the electronics stimulate the auditory nerve electrically, and the brain interprets that stimulation as sound. It's driven by a computer, typically either worn behind the ear or, or clipped to a belt. Uh, so that's a computer pretending to be an ear and stimulating the auditory nerve the way the ear would have if it had worked. There is work going on with ocular implants and also spinal implants. So here we're talking about sensory neural systems and sensory motor systems, which we know how to interface to. Cognitive interfacing, what are you thinking, is much, much harder. And I don't think I understand how we will do that right now because you would need to interface with nerve bundles at extremely high density and then be able to signal in a way that the brain interprets that signal as, uh, as a cognitive uh, thing. If we ever actually understand how memory works, then it's conceivable that we would be able to build a cognitive interface to the brain Mm -hmm. where your thinking isn't just producing electrical signals, but it's actually producing something that the computer knows how to interpret. I don't know how we would do that at this point.